So, here we are. Producing Easy and Gourmet's very first video for our refined dining channel. I'm Chef Ciara Fogel. Today's dish will be preparing Young Goose. That's absolutely one of my favorite dishes. Um, with it, we'll be making goose fat fried chanterelle mushrooms, pickled watermelon radish, and roasted Romanesco. In addition, we'll be preparing a real nice chanterelle barchetto sauce. This video is going to essentially have three separate pieces, starting with the goose. Shall we begin? Here you'll notice I begin cutting away all the excess fat. I'm later going to use this for rendering to fry the chanterelle mushrooms. Here you'll see I keep that neck aside, which I'll later use in the stock to produce our goose sauce. I always start with the thighs and then later move on to the breast. In this case, with a goose, I'm actually going to cut into the breasts from the backbone versus the breastbone. Processing that goose, I should have four real nice pieces of meat. Two breasts and two thighs. Now in our case, I'm only going to use the breast for this dish, so I'm going to take those thighs and vacuum seal them and freeze them away. Here I'm going to go ahead and cross cut that skin and fat, and that's going to allow for easier rendering once I get to the cast iron. Here I'm using a generous amount of sea salt to sweat the meat, so essentially removing some of the excess liquid and giving it a little bit of a brine. So that salt's going to stay on there for about 15 minutes before I uh, use the rest of the seasoning that I'm setting up. Here are the spices that I'm using are just a peppercorn melange, a little bit of parsley, a little bit of ground bay leaf and just a touch of granulated roasted garlic and of course truffle salt.
Here I'm cooking the breast fat side down. That way I can render the fat out first. Now this is gonna take a few minutes because I'm using medium low heat because I don't want to burn the outside of that skin before I've rendered as much of the fat out as I want. I essentially want the bottom to be like little chicharron, so super full of flavor and delicious. As the fat's rendering and that fat and skin layer is becoming crispy, I want to make sure I'm ladling some of that rendered fat, that hot fat, onto the top layer of the fleshy portion of that goose. That helps prepare it for whenever I flip it over and I get that seasoning kind of already embedded into the flesh of the goose. This is the exact color you want to see that fat and skin at before you flip over your breast. At which point I want to make sure I'm lifting it and allowing that rendered fat, that hot fat, to get beneath to give that perfect brown and perfect golden crust on the top as well. Once I have that nice sear on the top of the goose breast, this is when I'm going to put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes until I'm exactly at 145 degrees. And then I'm going to let it rest for another 7 before I slice into it. We're preparing the carcass for uh, roasting prior to using it for the stock and I just used some olive oil, sea salt, and ground bay leaf and this is going to give it a nice browning to cook out some of that excess blood before I put it in the stock and also the browner your meat is, the browner your sauce is. So I want to get this nice perfect brown right here and then you'll notice that excess blood that's been already cooked out of it which means I want to skim out as much throughout the course of you know, cooking down that stock. In this case, in the stock, in addition to the goose, I'm using three Chipolini onions, two full garlic cloves, some parsley, and scallion. Very simple. So this is what it should look like after we've cooked down 15 quarts worth of water and, and stock all the way down to one quart. That's your exact measurement. That's how you know uh, outside of the color and the texture that you've gotten the flavor you want out of that stock. And then now I've got to make the chanterelle stock. So here again, scallions, parsley, peppercorns, um, and then the chanterelles. These are dehydrated. So I'm going to rehydrate these chanterelle mushrooms and I'm going to cook it down from roughly two and a half quarts all the way down to one pint. And so you'll notice the coloration that you're looking for when you get it to that point.
stock. I'm going to choose 15 of the plumpest, most visually appealing of those essentials, set them aside. That way, all I have left is this beautiful stock. These don't necessarily have to be combined in any order, um, but what you're taking here is two full quarts of liquid, and you're gonna cook this down at medium low temperature all the way down to roughly a cup and a half, so 12 ounces uh, worth of sauce, and you should have the texture we're looking for. To take some of that excess impurities that float to the top of the reduced sauce out, that way the texture is as silky and creamy as we want and there's no bitterness towards the end. And then reduced about halfway, go ahead and add three tablespoons of butter. That's gonna help create a more balanced flavor and also give us the texture we want. So if you do not have a hand blender, at this point you can stop, pour it into a blender, and then pour it back into the stock pot. And you'll notice the rings around the cast iron so you'll see exactly how much it's producing each time with each step. So you can use that as a reference point. Once you have it reduced down to where it should be, you'll notice the way the texture looks on the spoon and the color that you're looking for. Now this is going to cool for about five minutes before I check its texture because it's served at room temperature, not at you know, 165, 170 degrees as you see it here. Checking the texture, so we're gonna put a little bit on the plate and then swipe the spoon through it. If the sauce does not enclose on itself and you still see that nice clean line in the middle, the texture is perfect. So here we're going to cut the watermelon radish into nice uniform squares, but much like the goose, none of this is going to waste. Any excess that I have from any of the vegetables I use. I always keep separate in the refrigerator, prepared to use for a vegetable stock at a later date. Nothing should go to waste. So as we prepare to create the pickling liquid, You'll notice these peppercorns go in first, and that's because we needed to toast up and get the flavor by cooking out some of the natural oil in each corn. So once you, you'll smell it, it'll become very aromatic, and the peppercorns will actually start popping a little bit. That's when you know that those are toasted enough to be able to lend the proper amount of flavor to our pickling liquid. Add the water first, that way I don't accidentally bitter my vinegar with that hot pan. I want to make sure that I'm able to get all those flavors nice and pronounced in my pickling liquid with those peppercorns and the charred onion seed. I'm going to cook it for another 7 minutes at medium to low heat before I heat it up all the way at the end, right before I pour it over top of my vegetables to get that nice quick pickle. In this case I've added half a lime to give it a little bit more citrus flavor. And then I'm going to cover it with a plate here in a moment to retain the heat 
and make sure that I can have that watermelon radish absorb as much of that pickle flavor as I can prior to plating. This is sat for about two hours and you'll notice that a lot of the color from the watermelon radish has lended itself to the pickling liquid. Once it looks just like this, I know it's time to put it into a quart and get it in the fridge because I actually want these radishes to be nice and cold once I'm ready to plate. And it's the Romanesco in boiling water with a little bit of salt for no more than five minutes. Just enough to get those colors nice and bright. And then you'll notice here at the end, I go ahead and I throw in an ice bath. That stops the cooking process. That way I get the exact texture out of this Romanesco that I'm looking for prior to roasting. And here I want to be careful not to cut into the Romanesco itself. So once I move these leaves over to the stockpile, I'm going to cut away the core on the very bottom of this Romanesco without cutting into the clusters because I want those to maintain as much of their shape as possible. So I'm really delicate with that way I pull it off its core. Now here I'm going to take about a quarter pound of butter and melt that down with the exact same spice mixture that I used on the goose breast earlier. I want my flavors to be uniform. And this butter is going to allow those yellow and greens to really brighten up during the roasting process, which should be done at 400 degrees for no more than six more minutes. So just enough to open up those colors and get your clusters real nice and hot and bright. So that's that goose fat that I saved earlier. I'm gonna render down at low temperature and then cool. That's the fat. I'm going to use three generous sized spoonfuls. I'm gonna get that fat nice and hot so I can go ahead and fry those chanterelle mushrooms. So here, are those, these are the 15 mushrooms that I had separated earlier with the best texture and the best uh, shape. And I like to use icorn flour when dusting these. I feel it gives it the best flavor, especially when frying in animal fat. I only fry these chanterelles for about two and a half minutes because I don't want to over fry them because I still want them to have that crisp exterior but still be tender on the inside. So you have to be really cautious with that. And once I take them out, I'm going to take some sea salt and just give it a real nice little dusting so I can make sure all that flavor comes through. I always start with the sauce or I finish with the sauce. And in this case, you'll notice I make sure to leave some of each part of the plate off the sauce enough to allow for various flavor appeals. And 
and bon appetito. Thanks everyone for watching our very first video. Be sure to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Until next time.